Ah, oh, hello. Uh, just a moment. I will uh, just turn off the uh, radio. Otherwise, I might be had up for infringement of uh, copyright if uh, I don't. Anyway, I'm here to talk about the OM system OM5 camera with the 12 to 45 Pro lens. I would uh, show it to you, but I can't because it's recording this uh, video. I do feel these days that uh, for productions like YouTube, then the video quality in a camera is just as uh, important as the conventional use of the camera. I took possession of the OM5 earlier in the year and I've spent a splendid summer Use, I've used it the whole time, actually. Uh, I haven't as yet gone back to my EM1 Mark II with the 12 to 100 uh, Pro lens. I think this new camera has served me really well during the summer months. And whilst I am a landscape photographer, where I have found it particularly valuable is in my sort of sideline that is photographing inside stately homes and uh, churches. For example, a place like this in Twickenham, on the west of London, Strawberry Hill House, the home of Horace Walpole. It's an absolutely amazing place. But these places, although they allow photography, do not permit the use of tripods or um, flash. So you've got a handhold, and although the 12 to 45 Pro LEDs does not have an image stabiliser, of course the camera does, and it was absolutely amazing. So what I'm going to do now is to show you just a dozen of my favourite sort of gallery pictures, if you like. A good many are taken inside because this is where, particularly the smaller size and lighter weight of the camera, where it has proved to be invaluable. So, I hope you enjoyed this selection and I'll give a little bit of detailed synopsis for each individual picture, not only about the place, but the technique I used as well. So, enjoy it. For this program, I used only the OM5 and the 12 to 45 Pro lens out of box. They are all handheld, no filters or any other additional gear. The camera was mounted on a Benbow tripod for video, fine tuned in iMovie. I saved images to the RAW file format, adjusted them in Adobe Lightroom and prepared JPEG copies at the reduced resolution of 1400 pixels width for Microsoft PowerPoint, then converted to MP4 for YouTube. Much of my work is done this way. Literary a London backwater. The region's canal skirts around the north of the city and this shot is taken near Regent's Park in Camden. I wanted to frame the Chinese-looking boathouse, which is a restaurant with the bridge. The graffiti might divide opinion, but it does add colour, but I could have done without the legs. Although I shot on programme and the aperture is factor 6.3, the use of a wide-angle optic has delivered sufficient depth of field. I love the challenge of high contrast images, but you have to work at it to avoid burnout in highlights and dense shadows having no detail. I don't use HDR, preferring a save to RAW and then adjust in Adobe Lightroom for more control. I spot meter near a highlight, allowing it to become slightly overexposed, letting shadows to take care of themselves. I then have a wild moment in Lightroom with the sliders, collecting highlights and shadows that would probably have purists raising their hands in horror, but it works. Noise used to be a problem when lightening shadows, but the latest cameras and software has made that easier. I did have to wait for a moment to get this shot 
without people, and I corrected converging verticals again in Latrum. A grab shot acting on impulse, not experienced in this type of photography. F5.6 limits depth of field, and so does the telephoto lens, throwing the background out of focus, but the shrub remains sharp. Having more time and patience, I would have chosen a less colourful background. You can now blur a background in Photoshop. So, is that cheating? On the other hand, in this next shot, I have taken a person out. When it rains or clouds over, I take interiors as contrast is reduced and detail clarified. Examples in a moment, but when I came out of Osterley House, I was tempted by the reflections. So, another grab shot, hence the person that needed removing, and the reason why white balance is still on auto. Although I am saving to RAW and make changes in Lightroom, for interiors I switch white balance to, yes, auto to cater for a variety of different light sources during photography. If saving to JPEG, you have to make a more informed decision based on what the finder displays, as it is not so easy to change later. Aston Hall was an important discovery and well worth the diversion. It is next door to Aston Villa. I was doing a day trip to Birmingham on the train, of course, to photograph the canal network for a future YouTube production. I used the bus to reach Aston, then walked back. It is only recently that photography has been permitted inside the Royal Pavilion, but no tripods or flash. The use of program might surprise you. Because of low light and by keeping the ISO at 200, the exposure system has to use the widest aperture so that it can offer the fastest possible shutter speed for hand holding. Speed might not be of essence with this shot, but a more general view of the room has to be taken quickly before somebody else appears. The image stabilizer has done a grand job at a thirteenth of a second helped by a wide-angle optic to reduce camera shake. There were other people about, so not only did I wait, but also worked quickly, so program came to my rescue, and again the camera has coped well with an eighth of a second shutter speed. A feature of Micro Four Thirds not often mentioned is increased depth of field at most settings. This quality comes into its own when the level of light is low, reducing depth of field but increased here by using a wide angle optic. White balance on auto to cater for different light sources tweaked later in Lightroom. You won't get rid of people in Westminster Abbey, or can you? See how I did it in my other program on YouTube. Otherwise, it is a stained glass window and ceiling job. There were plenty of people milling about, so I had to work quickly. Photography has only recently been permitted inside the Abbey, for which we have to thank, yes, the smartphone, as it became difficult to stop, and many people were using them. I do take shots inside churches and stately homes on lovely sunny days, when the challenges are going to be quite different. More light aids hand-holding, but like the previous shot of Norwich, high contrast here creates its own composition. The technique is much the same with the earlier Norwich shot as discussed. When I tweak the raw files in Lightroom, I have considerable artistic license in determining how much detail I add to shadows and highlights, but you have to get the exposure right first. This shot does not have any claims to be artistic, but historically it shows something important. Upon entering Rotherhithe Station for the London Overground, you enter and go down by one of the original shafts used for this pioneering tunnel under the Thames. It initially ended in 
failure and nearly claimed the life of, yes, Isambard Kingdom Brunel before he engineered the Great Western Railway. In much of my work, I look beyond the image and ask why a view is important and why is it here? a distinction that can be attached to many other landscape and architectural shots, beyond their status as works of beauty and art. Time for tea? A ritual my friends know, and they sometimes join me, important for reviving the grey cells. This is the Vintage Rose in Storrington, and the cakes are nice too. Later you may find me at a hostelry, tasting the harder stuff, well, <laughs> red wine actually, Merlot or Shiraz, you can shove anything down my throat. And finally, a self-portrait demonstrating and proving my technique, but uh, normally I do use the viewfinder. <laughs> 